Hi everyone, welcome back to the 10th episode of Bag in the Monroe's series. This week was climbing Ben Vorlick and Stukacroin, which are two very popular in Monroe's in Scotland. This walk was just over 15 kilometres and you start on the south side of Loch Erne. But if you've only just started hill walking, then just doing Ben Vorlick is a good one just to get started. And as you'll see later on, you do have to do a little bit of scrambling to get up Stukacroin, but that made the walk a lot more enjoyable because I've never had to do a scramble before and it was really fun. We just parked a few minutes away from the path where you walk up, but there's this is a long road so you, you can get plenty of spaces to park. And on this walk was just me and my mate Owen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there was a guy in front of us who was uh, needing a, a pee quite early on and he basically just did it on the path, like just off the path, it was, it was just, yeah, it was so weird. At the side. <laughs> I know, yeah, he just went down that fence and just started missing, like in front of everyone, like groups of girls around you now. It's weird. And I was like, what? On the next clip coming up, Owen has these trousers that uh, zip off into shorts and he, he didn't want to take his shoes off because there's people behind us, so he just tucked them into his sock. You don't actually need to take one, just cut some of the socks. Down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just look at how bad they look at his ankles. Yeah, the, the walk up to Ben Bar looks really nice. There's a lot of water features to look at, so it is quite an enjoyable walk. Beautiful. On the map, you can see it's about halfway up to Ben Varlick and maybe about an eighth of the way around the whole route. This part of the walk is about as bad as it gets, going up to Ben Vorlick. Obviously it's steeper when you're going up Stuka Croin, but for the Ben Vorlick part, this is probably the hardest part. We're getting closer to the top now, and this was the best point we had for views because it was starting to get quite cloudy. Hi. Because it was quite cloudy as well, I just feel like the summit of Ben Vorlick just came out of nowhere. Like, we just started walking up and we just saw the trig point and we're like, oh wow, like, that's us up here already. So it does come on, on to you quite quickly. Yeah, exactly, now it's almost so easy. Haha, <laughs> so we thought. Can hear someone? But after you have got to the trig point, you do have to walk along this edge because the, the true peak of the Monroe is just a bit further on. And we got to this point in just under an hour and 50 minutes. There wasn't much to see at the top of Ben Vorlick, but the views at Stukacrine were so much better, so stick cool. around to watch them.
Hey, kid. That is humid. <laughs> stop farting! <laughs> yeah, lag. Yeah, oi, you, stop farting. <laughs> Oh, not much to see here, fans. Not much. After you've done Ben Vorlick, you do need to go left off the path and then come down quite a lot before you start your ascent to Stuka Crown. Yeah, I think I made the good decision there not to jump over. <laughs> so we're now at the low point between the two Monroes and this is where you need to start scrambling. Sacks and then crampons. Oh. <laughs> Some lovely views of the valley and Ben Vorlock. When you're scrambling up Stuka Crown, there's so many paths, so just pick the best route that you think. Finally reached the summit of Stuka Crown in just over three hours. Now, just some warnings for when you're descending. When you're going round Stuka Crown, your your ankles are like a, at an angle, so you do start getting sore ankles. Uh, I, I don't know any way around this unless you put on some ankle support, but it, like when you're walking for like two hours, like your, your ankles will get sore when you're coming down and round the mountain. And this is where we chose to sit and have lunch. And also, these paths no. were so muddy and wet, the, the really bad paths. Uh, I don't know if we caught the rain um, a couple days beforehand, but yeah, they were really bad, so you just need to watch out for that. So this is us around three quarters of the way around. It would be interesting to do this route anti-clockwise to see how it would be, but it would be much more difficult coming down Stuka Crown the steep way rather than going up it. <laughs> and put wires on you now, really. Hi. 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 Hi.
Twitter and I don't know. When we were going back to our car, we realised someone had knocked over a, a gate, so we tried to go over there and fix it. <laughs> I would not do it. <laughs> Put it in the hole! In the hole! There's a hole down there! Why does it smell like a harbour? <laughs> he asked why does it smell like a harbour and stand right beside the lock. But yeah, the entire walk took us just over 5 hours to finish, and now it's time to get into some stats. So Ben, Vorlick and Stuka Croin are very similar in height, with one being 985 meters and the other one being 975 meters. They are my 18th and 19th Munros that I've completed, and they are 165th and 182nd tallest Munros. The total walk took us 9.4 miles. To get to the top of Ben Vorlick it took us 1 hour and 47 minutes, and the top of Stuka Crown was just over 3 hours, with the final time being 5 hours and 9 minutes. I burned 7,000 calories in total and took 40,000 steps. And with my formula, this one was a speed of 4.5 stars, but with a difficulty of 1.5 stars just because of the scrambling. The scenery was a 3 star, so an overall recommended rating of 4 stars for this walk. Make sure you tune in next Sunday because I'll be putting up the video of the Glen Sheen 9. Because you made it to the end of the video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future hillwalking videos. I'll see you in the next one.